Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Time to check out the big stories on our national dailies this morning. And as usual, we have a guest on standby who will be making sense of all of the stories on the front pages of our national dailies. I'd like to start off with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Uh, looking at the front page of the Daily Trust. Hashtag and SARS. One year after no evidence of Lekki massacre. Uh, that's the bold story on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. The several riders. CNN amnesty should tend the apology. That's what the federal government is saying. PDP kicks as police disperse demonstrators in Abuja and Lagos. Uh, that's also another one. Uh, moving away from that story. Declare bandits as terrorists, Erufai tells Buhari. And Nigeria, Turkey signs eight pact on energy, defense, mining, and others. Uh, just uh, before we move away, after dealing, Dilly Darling, notorious bandits releases 30 school abductees. Uh, that's also on the Daily Thrust newspaper this morning. Uh, that's the much we can take on the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, the leadership newspapers, it says here, big one, federal government budgets, 2,178 naira for each citizen's health care in one year. 20 years after, health budget falls short of 15% Abuja declaration. Sector got 4.75% uh, in 2019, 3.83% in um, 2020, and 4.18% in 2021. Experts identify corruption, lack of accountability as major pitfalls in the sector. Bandits kidnap 30 passengers in Niger. And um, also, the Nigeria Turkey signed pacts on energy, defense, and industry. Protesters defy police, mark NSAR's anniversary. It says 888 killed, 2,553 kidnapped in Kaduna in nine months. Um, also on the leadership, I uh, think I uh, can squeeze in one more uh, this morning. It says a DPR, PPPR, APF, federal government douses workers' fear of job losses. All right, let's check out the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, looking at the front page of the Punch newspaper, hashtag answers panel compensation. Lagos pays 420 million naira. MBA faults Akwaibom Ogun. Or your Benway for shunning payments. That's boldly written on the Punch newspaper this morning. We will submit report to NEC Abuja to pay victims, says Or your. Please disrupt rallies, disperse protesters, journalists arrested. Insurance firm puts claim at 20 billion naira and probes delay payment. Uh, that's also another header there you find on the Punch newspaper. As you're looking at the front page of the Punch, you also have bandits allegedly kidnap over 30 travelers and steal cows in Niger. Uh, power producers lose 1.66 trillion naira over non-payment for unused power. Power producers lose 1.66 trillion naira over non-payment for unused power. Uh, that's on page 33 of the Punch newspaper. Terrorists who tried to overthrow me were in Nigeria. You find uh, the Turkish president quoted on that. That's on page 9. And uh, just before we move away from uh, the Punch newspaper. And list 774,000 youths from 774 local government against bandits. El Rufai tells federal government, and that's also on page 9 of uh, the Punch newspaper. I think that's so much we can take on the Punch this morning. All right, now to the Guardian. Um, arrest, uh, police brutality, headline, NSAS Memorial in Lagos and Abuja. It says over 20 police stations burnt by hoodlums used to be refurbished. Federal government claims Lekki Killings falls, phantom, or phantom massacre rather. U.S. advises pro protesters to engage leaders politically. And it says, no justice for victims of police brutality one year after. That is from uh, Amnesty International. Also, Huriwa asks National Assembly to set up protection board for protesters. Also on The Guardian, anxiety in defunct oil agencies as new heads take charge. 
PDP governors uh, meet to resolve threats to convention, consensus arraignment. Um, we can also find EFCC arraigns Olejime for alleged 69 billion naira fraud. Um, Turkey coup plotters still active in Nigeria, Erdogan warns Buhari. Declare bandits as terrorists, El Rufai urges federal government. Eg uh, security experts urge Buhari to take um, FITO alert seriously. And uh, we can also see Nigeria-Turkey trade volume to expand by $5 billion. Those are the uh, big ones on The Guardian this morning. Mr. Ayata, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning and nice to be with you as always. Um, yeah. All right. I, I think we can we basically just get started with the NSAS Memorial and, um, you know, the events from yesterday. Um, I wish I could write a book titled NSAS as Metaphor, you know, because... Um, it seems the federal government does not really understand what NSARS is all about. NSARS is young Nigerians wishing they had a country. NSARS is a demand for citizenship rights to be protected. NSARS is a metaphor. It's not a group of recalcitrant young people coming around and causing havoc. So long as you see it within that very myopic prism, you the will fail to catch the this. What the NSAS is all about. NSAS is young people seeking a country, hoping that Nigeria and Niger could be merged because government controls Nigeria with all their resources, whereas they have to take care of themselves and provide everything in the Niger country. And nobody would not want to also have what belongs to them. And so long as we do not get that right, we will start to continue to bicker and complain and whine about the young people and then there were no people killed. Um, CNN should tender apology. No, there were 95 people killed. And we, we failed to catch the spirit of NSARS. So my appeal this morning is that government should take a step back and ask themselves exactly what is NSARS. That's where I like to start from. Okay, uh, let's look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, 20 years after the health budget fails short of 15% Abuja declaration. Uh, that's it. Let's share your thoughts on that. And the fact that uh, federal government budgets 2,178 naira for each citizen's health care in a year. That's, uh, that's what it is. Thanks for bringing that up, because that's actually the figure that I wanted to bring out. When they budget that for health care per citizen, please go and find out what they budget for defense. And ask me what they understand as national security. These are people living in the past. I keep saying this. There is no defense that is stronger than the defense of the generality of the people. So all these people are contractors. In their own understanding of defense is buying hardware for the army, buying this, buying that, buying this, buying that. It's contract. They're not doing it because they care about giving us defense. No, they don't care. They couldn't care less because they are defended. I ask you, why should as low as a commissioner be guarded by sometimes as many as three, four policemen? There was something that somebody said, and I agree with the person. There should be a law that you cannot be in government continuously for more than 12 years. Even if you must come back, take a break of at least two years and come to this world these people have been in government all their life. They've been protected. They've been provided for. So they don't really understand the alternate world. They don't understand the world that you and I live in. 
So all they do by way of their policies is how to protect their empire. And as far as they are concerned, they are the conquerors and we are the citizens. It's like Emirates. That's what it is. So our governance is not democracy. We are not partners with them. That is why they can vote as little in a pandemic, because we are still in the pandemic, which means that if there was no pandemic, they probably would have brought it down to 1,000 naira per citizen. So what are the proactive rules that they are doing? And even in this pandemic, have you, who is going about telling, apart from the general uh, wear your mask, uh, wash your hands, you know, all those things that, you know, the global body says, May I know the body that is going around telling Nigerians what they can do to boost their immune system outside of go take the jab? Where is that commitment? Where is that sincerity of purpose? Where is that engagement with the citizens that you can see, that enlightenment? I happen to be married to, um, well, I should say I'm happy with that. I'm privileged to be married to a medical doctor. And she is so involved in health literacy. And she seems to be one person that just stands out in Nigeria handling health literacy. And even when she tries to engage government, they're like, you know, uh, so how much? Are we? And she's like, no, it's not about buying anything. It's about enlightenment because knowledge is power. The first thing in medicine is knowledge, is awareness. There are many sicknesses, diseases that you can no jettison or avoid just by having knowledge. The day they tell you about hand washing and they sit down to engage you, my wife engaged me on hand washing and my life changed. I'm like, wow. Just that habit of hand washing. And then communication in, 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 in medical you know, vocabularies, you discover that you go to a hospital, the doctor is not interested in telling you what they are doing. They're writing this thing in handwriting that you cannot understand. They are using grammars that do not communicate. And she's like, we need to change the narratives, engage the people, let the people understand. Where is government effort in health literacy? just health literacy. So our governments are not really interested in our welfare. They are just using us as a bait to do more and more contract. Unless something has a contract value that they can award, they, they are not interested. Or it has this edifice that people can see, I bought this, I bought that, I built this, I this, I that. They don't understand what governance is all about. Governance is about service to the people. And you should rate yourself by how much the people are satisfied with your service. Absolutely. And of course, um, you know, all the angles to this would really be uh, to look at how much um, of our budget really is going into security, going into infrastructure, going into healthcare, and also education, um, you know, which is a very huge part of the conversation as to where Nigeria will be in the next, you know, 20 years. Um, with the level of education uh, uh, that we're currently dealing with. Absolutely. Maybe you brought that in and I... And uh, you know, we live in a house where we are like a, one mini government on our own. As my wife is taking health care, for me, it's education. Anybody who knows my life knows that I am where I am today because of just one word, education. That's why my birthday, like I said, off camera on the 1st of November, all we're doing is a colloquium on education. And the whole world is coming into a quiet room. We're talking about the um, Alaji Kwankwaso that is called uh, Mr. Education, people like uh, Moralu and um, just just name it, all of them, you know, they are coming into a quiet room and it is between oil and education where should the emphasis be, you know? Yeah. So that, 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 that attention to education, that understanding, that mindset that the future is education is just not there. You can't see it. If you want to understand a country, look in the budget. When you look in the budget of the country, you can tell, you know, first time the priorities, the mindset of the people, and um, look at our own budget, and you will see where we stand. Yeah, and um, before we move on, just also, also mention that there is also, um, you know, a part of the conversation that should include um, the difference between what is budgeted, uh, uh, budgeted and what is actually released. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, the budget implementation at the end of the year is something that we don't get to speak about um, enough uh, to know how successful the previous budget was. I did, I did that of a quiet bomb, and it was, it was, in fact, it was like somebody doing a coup against the government because the Auditor General's report for the previous year, I took it out for the first time 
and I spread it as if um, tomorrow will not come. And the results were, were bloody. It was, was terrible. Yeah. I think that we should set up and um, 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 this other body uh, budget should um, do a lot more enlightenment yeah, on budget implementation. That's a post-budget analysis. The releases, there are certain places that you have almost 100% release where their contracts and things like that. But when it comes to welfare and the citizens, the releases, <laughs> yeah. they are hard to come by. All right. Uh, show your thoughts on the state um, uh, the story and the leadership. Bottom left of the leadership is in Kaduna. It says 888 killed, 2,553 kidnapped in Kaduna in nine months. You know, I, I, El Rufai is, is an enigma of some sort. Many times I find it difficult to know where to place him and how. But hate him or like him, that guy has a capacity to say things the way they are. Many things I don't understand how he just turns a blind eye. I think that's what makes him a human being because we all do have a dark side or blind side. But 888, a very, very, very kind of graphic figure. And I think it's almost intentional and deliberate by, by divinity. 888 killed in nine months in nine months and that man is saying federal government please declare these people as terrorists he has a reason for that and i've tried to say that in this place before today there are what you call rules of engagement by by that which is global and when you leave office you can be brought back and tried for things like genocide and things like that so unless People are declared terrorists. There is a certain might you cannot you cannot um, you know bring to bear on them. And El Rufai knows that, and many of us know that. And we tell the federal government, if you could declare IPOB a terrorist organization, why is it so difficult for you to? These guys look at the figure they have. They, they have they've killed. I don't even want to talk of that one of kidnapping. The figure they've killed in less than one year in one state. That means by the time you get to the end of the year, they would have killed minimum 1,000 in one state in one year. And those people are roaming the street and sometimes you are romancing them as well. Should we bring them amnesty? Should we do this? Should we do that about them? Please let somebody just tell me how IPOP is more dangerous to national security than these terrorists that are called bandits. So I want to agree with them, El Rufai, this morning. I want to take sides with him that these people should be considered terrorists so that our Tucano jets that we brought so much money and spent so much to get, how can a Tucano jet cannot a, a, engage a civil society? All you need is like, look, if you are not this person, leave this place so, because we are going to level it. There must be casualties. There will be casualties. On, because there are casualties on a daily basis. 888 in one, in, in one state. What are they? Are they not casualties? Hey, you may kill an innocent person. 888 in, one, in less than one year. Are they not innocent people? We've got to sit up and take very hard decisions. A man has had an accident, the hand is bleeding, and they say, cut off this hand. If not so, this person will bleed to death. Cut off the hand so that he can stop the bleeding. You say, oh, the other fingers are still moving. If you cut off the hand, you will lose the fingers that are still missing. And you're going to be nursing that finger until the whole body dies. It's sad, it's unfortunate. We don't pray for it. When you go to war, people are killed. They are what you call unintended consequences. I think we need to take a hard question, answer, or position so that we can sleep with our two eyes in this country. All right, let's also share your thoughts on uh, this headline on the Punch newspaper. It talks about the NSAS panel compensation. Lagos to pay uh, 420 million naira, and the MBA faults Akwaibom or your and Ogun State and Burnway for shunning payment. I feel very saddened that um, I don't know why my state, Akwaibom, should be on that list. I feel very saddened. 
I, I don't know whether it's an oversight or there's something that's not proper because I don't think my governor would do that. Um, uh, Dick, you know, Gomi Manuel, I don't think he would he would do that. I don't see him as such a person who would say he, he couldn't care less, they could go to hell, and because that's just the attitude. I don't know about other states, but I would like to believe that that of a quiet boom, there's an oversight somewhere there because no sane governor should see what's going on, should know that these panels were set up with a good intention of addressing at least a part of the demands of, of, uh, of, of the young people. And also letting this gun totting, you know, uh, trigger happy policemen know that there could, be, there could be consequences. Okay? So we talk of the carrot and the stick. On one hand, those that were affected, we said, recommend compensation for them. Not necessarily adequate, but just as a symbol, as a gesture. And those that were culpable, put them where they belong. And why a state government would say, we don't care, we can't do recommend compensation, it, 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 it falls on the wrong side of me. And like I say, I would say it again, I, uh, it's not my place to come to national television to castigate my state. So I would rather think that there's an oversight or a misreport somewhere because I don't think that my governor would, um, would be that insensitive to, 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 to jettison such, such a, no, a noble gesture. Okay, well, um, on the punch, one of the stories there, and of course uh, this is interesting because uh, in the southeast there's um, also meant to be a seat at home today. Uh, because of uh, the trial of Namdi Kano. And so you can see it at the bottom right of the punch there. It says, lawyers demand Kano's presence as trial resumes today. Uh, Mr. Ayatok, this is, you know, going to be another opportunity for the Nigerian government to, once again, you know, bring uh, Namdi Kano to court and, you know, con resume his trial. Uh, they failed the last time to present him in court. Uh, what do you think will play out today and how important is it? It depends on what they want to achieve. If they want to achieve mischief and let there be some more misunderstanding and trouble in, in the Southeast, knowing that Anambra election is just next door, they will try to play game. But if they care about the Southeast, they care about the people, whether it's Southeast or South-South or Northeast or Northwest or North Central or Southwest, what they would do is to balance out between satisfying the people on one hand and maintaining a level of peace and security on the other hand. And as of today, they should have the necessary intel. These people work when they want to work. There's a story that a former governor friend of mine told me that he said, Ezekiel, something happened. I left where I was and I went somewhere. And in the night, I used a back door and took off and um, went somewhere. And by the time I came back to my state, the director of SSS called me and told me exactly where I went, told me exactly what happened. And he said, as a governor, he said he was, he couldn't believe he was shocked. What does that mean? When these people want to work, they know how to work. Once they want an intel on something that is of interest to them, they know what to do and how to get about it. So you can balance out between the need, expectations, desires of the people and national security, in quote, by doing what? You can have this trial open. You can change the venue. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know if um, changing venue, you know, um, makes any difference so that you invite the people and those that should be invited, a lot of the media, and they are covering it, and if possible, even transmit it live so that people can see what is going on. All this question of national security, national security, national security is becoming another metaphor. Maybe we're now having a country of metaphors where you say one thing and yet it means another thing altogether. National security could mean that we really don't have anything to say, but you see, we cannot expose ourselves and embarrass ourselves by coming to say what we know we don't have to say. So let us just keep going and, um, you know, pretending that we are, you know, it's like speaking loud and saying nothing. So I think that they should please, for whatever it's 
worth for the sake of peace in the southeast they should take nambi kanu to where people can see him have a free fair trial openly and then we will now be able to say you wanted to see nambi kanu you've seen him you wanted to see the trial you've seen it it's transparent so let's cool down we'll be able to do that but if if they refuse to pre present him now a child is crying and i'm going to tell the child don't cry don't cry don't cry and probably they are beating the child i'm letting them beat the child instead of talking to the person beating the child i'll be telling the child don't cry and they said and yet to, why haven't you told the child not to cry i'm an unassociated southeasterner you know by association and i feel their pain i, I understand what they are going through and I expect the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is the father of the whole nation, to feel what they are feeling and do the needful, as Nigerians would say. That's an appellance. Carry them along and do the needful. Once you do those two things, Nigerians are okay with you. Okay, maybe in the next one minute, uh, let's see how we can share your thoughts on the issue of bandits. On the Punch newspaper, it says, Bandit allegedly kidnaps over 30 travelers and steal cows in Niger, um, what do you think of this current security uh, concern, especially on our roads? Yeah, but I, you can, I think you can also add to that. Um, sorry, Mr. Ayatok. You can also add to that the story, also on the punch. If you see, look at the top uh, corner of the punch. It says, um, the terrorists who tried to overthrow me are in Nigeria. That is from the Turkish president. You see, uh, let me, that of, that of bandits and what they do, I mean, it's, it's, it's a story that I don't even know what I'll say, that Nigerians don't even know better or can even put it better. But let me come to this of um, this um, Turkish uh, president. When a president comes and makes such an open statement in your country, it's not that he's in the comfort of his home and saying, and you like, you look, you are, you are ranting uh, absolute nonsense. When he comes to your country to say that, I think you should take it absolutely serious and then go into cooperation with him. It's a better thing for you to take, you know, uh, the way it is than to want to explain away. There's nothing to explain away. I think that the Nigerian government should actually listen to this president, ask some hard questions, seek some corporations and root out all these people that are starting to find Nigeria to be conducive. Because that's, that's, that's the message we're sending out to, to all these terrorist organizations. Why would they want to leave, you know, um, uh, where, where is it, Turkey and come to Nigeria? If not that they find that the, the, the area there is like an investor. You go to an area where the investment climate is conducive. It's that simple. So I think that our government should feel embarrassed enough to call this man and have real serious heart-to-heart -heart talk and take them serious, except, of course, they know something that we do not know or they have an interest we do not know. Outside of that, if their interest is the security of the country, they should take that man serious and do something about it. There's nothing more to say than that. And probably as my parting words, today is the birthday of my very good friend, uh, Alaji Kwankwaso. So I'm in Kano to celebrate with him as he commissions many projects, including the sanitarium. And I think those who leave this um, seat of power should use whatever authority they had or they have to continue to better the society. Build schools, build sanitariums, build industries, stop taking our money outside the country invest in the country and if people will copy that we will be the better for it all right happy birthday to him thank you very much um Ezekiel talk as always for joining us and uh, we wish you an interesting day ahead thank you have a lovely day sir you too you too all right stay with us uh, that's off the press uh, we'll be back right after the short break and of course uh, coming up next we'll have a review of uh, Today in History and share with you something that happened on this day many years ago on the 21st of October.